Welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. My name's Sean and uh, work on RVs of all shapes and sizes. Uh, pretty much anything that you can put solar or off-grid batteries, power systems, inverters, all that kind of stuff, electrical fun stuff. Uh, that's what I do here in this shop and we got a couple of people that help us out from time to time. But today we are working on a uh, Sprinter van putting a Epic 460 amp hour battery in it from the company Epic. But I think they want to, it's always weird. Anyway, uh, it's, it's spelled a little funny, E-P-O-C-H. So um, been at work at it here and I want to show you where I'm at in it and what I'm doing and how you get a big battery like that into the, one of these vans. All right, uh, got the new one in starting to anyway, ran into a couple of hiccups and I said, you know what? This is the kind of thing people on my channel would love to see. So uh, first got this one out of here and let me tell you, this one will uh, Put your deadlift skills to the test. I don't know how much this weighs, but it definitely uh, made gave me second thoughts about if I should be lifting that the way I did, but I did. I got it up. And uh, this is how I recommend removing the old battery and putting the new one back in. Nice floor jack works really well. Uh, so this is that 460 amp hour epic battery from the company of the same name, but it, see it's spelled a little, not normally. Uh, it's uh, on here and what I found out and the reason why it's out and I'm doing so much in there is uh, the way the mounting plate is it comes right up here and I can't get the uh, remote battery switch or the data cables in there so I have to drill out the support there I'll show you here so got one done there kind of marked it and then I wrapped the raw edge with some of this split loom. That works pretty well to keep that protected. And uh, then we just hook up the rest there, the main positives there and then negatives down here somewhere. I got the other side to cut yet and uh, yeah, we'll take care of that here in a little bit. Let's sh show you what's going on inside. Got some fun stuff there too. So inside the van, uh, customer let me know, uh, here's where you'd like the battery meter to be that comes with these batteries and the remote on off switch. So I got those mounted in there and it's uh, kind of how that's looking there. I uh, ran up the wires up through the floor there and we're also gonna be adding a DC DC charger in Orion. And to do that, um, this line right here comes from the battery up front so we'll take uh, the main power input off of that and we'll feed that probably to the uh, other side of the uh, of this guy right here. This is the main fuse. That's where the output of the DC-DC charger will go and then we'll ground probably to the shunt, but on the load side of the shunt, of course. And uh, yeah. Now, we will have to probably disconnect the actuator line on that, you know, one of my, or the signal wire on that solenoid there because we don't want the solenoid directly connecting the alternator and battery together if we're running a DC-DC charger. The two won't work together. And uh, with these 460 amp hour batteries, you do really have to run a DC-DC charger and I will tell you why here in a minute. Hit my head there. So the reason why you really want to run a DC DC charger with these 460 amp hour batteries is unlike pretty much every other lithium battery BMS out there, these 460 ones, they really require or they get a little cranky if you charge them, if you try and charge them much over about 14 volts or so, really. They prefer about 13.9 to 14 volts, perfect. Uh, if you try and get them up to 14.4, they'll give you some warning errors. It's not really going to damage anything. They just kind of whine and complain about it. And I'd rather stay in the uh, specifications and the good graces of the battery manufacturer. So that's what we're going to do in this case. All right, I got the other one done. Oh. My abs are killing me right now. I'm on my, I'm on my back. I'm trying to keep pressure on this. It's good. It's a good workout though. All right, finally got this battery all cleaned up underneath here. Let's take a look. And uh, yeah, there it is. Got uh, some new cable wrap in there. 
So that's where that's gonna live. Although I think I gotta put a ratchet strap around here yet. My mistake, almost done. Then uh, inside here, got our uh, Orion DC-DC chargers. Uh, that's set, set up in there. And we've got that set to, oh geez, I just hit my head on this thing. Ow. <laughs> and that is set to only charge to 13.9 volts because that's what the battery wants. And we got the uh, power LED working and the gauge. And then over in here, we got a breaker that we put in for the little uh, the line coming off of the uh, start battery or chas yeah chassis battery solenoid there. That's what that line is, that big one. And then uh, I got this little switch here that you can see right in the middle of your screen. Uh, that is to control the signal uh, line for that solenoid. So. Uh, under normal operation with the Orion XS, we're going to have that uh, disconnected because we don't want that solenoid to engage anymore. We want the Orion XS here to be the one to charge. But if for some reason something were to go wrong with that or something were to happen, you could always flip that switch on and then that would re-engage that solenoid and you could restore the factory functionality. So that's everything we've done here. Uh, again, programmed this uh, Xantrax XC inverter to work with the system. I'm going to try not to hit my head again. Just hashtag tall people problems. And uh, yeah, Victron's shipping now with the uh, with their stuff these nice little um, uh, booklets with the pin code because uh, if you go on the on the app, it'll say default code is six zeros. They don't do that anymore uh, due to, I think, some EU regulations where you can't ship products with default passwords anymore, which is kind of good and bad. So that's it uh, on this project. I know it was a little bit short, but uh, in the winter here in Minnesota, that's what we're doing. We're not doing a lot of the big projects quite so much, although there is a big one coming up that I'm interested to share with you. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe or you want to see more stuff like this. Um, also, you can subscribe. Um, yeah, great to have you along. And uh, if you got any other questions, uh, you can leave them down below in the comments. I try to jump in there and answer when I can. Uh, otherwise, you can also check us out at sotasolar.com. It's spelled uh, like it is on my shirt there. Soda is short for Minnesota, but I love hearing what other people think it might be short for or what it is. Um, Anyway, I'm kind of rambling here at the end of the video like usual, but uh, again, you hung around this long, that means you're a true fan, so thank you. All right, we'll catch you next time. Bye.